Let's see if I can continue in the in the King James, First Peter, two, as free <clears throat> and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. For you are free, yet you are God's slaves. Mm. But as the servants of God. And don't use your freedom as an excuse to do evil. Kind of an oxymoron. <clears throat> But that's the beauty <coughs> of Jesus speaking in parables. You're a slave to Christ. You're trapped in his light. That's what the word predestination comes from. Oporizo or operizo or something to that effect. The, where we get our word horizon from, even though it comes from various sources the greek word used for predestination is one of the avenues to the word horizon there are others also uh there's latin ways there's different ways um if we were to take you to let's go to romans 8.30. Predestinate. Pro Orizzo, that's it. To determine, decide beforehand, when you look at that word, and if you put it with the word horizon, Strong's Concordance, it says to pre-horizon. The Horus zone, horizon. Horus, the sun. You're trapped in God's light. You are his servant. You are his slave. You're trapped. You are trapped in his light because you were preordained to be his he's god you can't change that and neither can any demon or devil or any goat of the earth as jesus stated in one of his parables known as the seven letters to the seven churches i open doors no man can shut and i shut doors no man can open. 404 for the book of Revelation. 37, which is the 12th prime number. 12 is the number for the church. Love that. <clears throat> so, the reason why I called it an oxymoron For you are free from damnable sin because he will correct you with a rod. He will beat the world out of you. That's Hebrews chapter 12, verses 6 to 8. And it says, yet you are God's slaves. Exactly what we've been talking about. So don't use your freedom as an excuse to do evil. If you're his, you won't. That's why it's an oxymoron. But I hope I'm using the term oxymoron properly. Oxymoron definition. A figure of speech which apparently contradictory terms appear in conjunction. Yes, I used it properly then. Um, And see, that's the beauty 
of his word. It is written in 90%, 80% of the text as if you're giving instructions to follow from a free will perspective, but interwoven in throughout the 90% is 10%, maybe it's 80%, 20. So written throughout the 80% is 20% telling you that you're called to it, that you're ordained to it, that you're a slave to it. I would say 15 to 10% or less. And 85 to 90% or even greater. It's written as if it's instructional free will items or a free will instruction manual, if you will. But then interwoven throughout which only sheep have the ability to understand 1 Corinthians, <laughs> First Corinthians 2.14, that only sheep will grasp that there's no decision to it. Did you see how you're told one thing in another in verse 16? Verse 16 is a parabolistic riddle. That's why... One of Batman's villains is the Riddler because they're making fun of Jesus because the Antichrist is Batman. You've got an oxymoron, parabolistic riddle in 1 Peter 2.16. Hey, you're God's sheep. You're trapped in the light. You're a sheep. So make sure that you don't do anything stupid with any free will decisions, even though it doesn't say free will, it's acting as if you don't. Because if it was going to be perfectly written without the riddle, without the parable, without the hard to understand or impossible to understand for goats, it would say, you are free from damnable sin. You are God's slaves. So by proxy, you will not use this freedom in Christ Jesus as an excuse to do evil. It's not how it's written. Now, again, that's new living. The King James can't even understand it. As free, not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as servants of God. Uh, that's, actually, that's actually written properly, isn't it? That's actually... As long as you can get past cloak of maliciousness, which is not really how we talk. That's high level intellectual lingo. And it's the King's English of the 15, 1600s. As free from damnable sin, you won't use your liberty for a cover to do evil. but you will live as proper servants of God. That's probably how we would rewrite that, right? And that's, you know, the King James is not perfect. We know John 3.16 is one butchered Bible verse, which is why it's crammed and shoved and cemented into the noses of the lost sheep or goats that follow a fake Christianity. Anyway, honor all men, love the brotherhood in Christ. Don't ever let it bother you that I add or remove from a King James or New Living Translation. That's not what it means to add or remove to the word of God. The original word of God was written in the Greek. I don't speak Greek. You don't speak Greek. Greek. So we translate it spiritually. We translate it using the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy, it's those of the Holy Spirit speaking to those of the Holy Spirit through the Holy Spirit in truth. The Holy Spirit is truth. 
the Holy Spirit is truth Bible verses. <clears throat> but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. Hmm. There it is. There's one we just read. Here's John 14, 17. That is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. It's exactly what we've been saying because it does not see him or know him, but you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. That's why we speak a different language, even though all lost sheep, goats, and found sheep are all looking at the same King James or New Living Translations, it won't be understood the same. That's why they're easily able to control and confuse and control and confuse goats, confusing goats, talking about wolves in sheep's clothing, talking about the blind leading the blind, the blind lest they both fall into the ditch. When the helper comes, now you notice these are not in the King James. <laughs> I love this little uh, section here, though. Um, Spirit of truth. Spirit. I'm going to keep this link and, you know, keep it in my little files for sure. Keep it in the archives, as they say. Love to look this stuff up, though, in the King James. When the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, that is the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me. First John 4, 6 says, we are from God. He knows God's, God listens to us. He who is not from God does not listen to us. By this, we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. First John 5, 6. Again, I'm not sure which translations these are in. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and with the blood. It is the spirit who testifies because the spirit is the truth. Jesus is the truth. The Holy Spirit is Jesus. They are each God in different forms. Honor all men, love the brotherhood of the church. Fear God. That's why you never know for sure if you're a sheep, why you're in this flesh. Because that flesh keeps gnawing at you. And you always feel unstable. That's what keeps you repenting. Honor the king. Servants. Right? Slaves. Be subject to your masters with all fear. Not only the good and gentle, but also to the forward. They had a certain servitude back then to work off debts. That's what that's talking about. For this is thankworthy. If a man for conscious toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully, for what glory is it when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall. Let's just go with let me show, let me show. For God is pleased when, when conscious of his will, you patiently endure unjust treatment. Of course, you get no credit for being patient if you are beaten for doing wrong. But if you suffer for doing good and endure it patiently, God is pleased with you. And of course, we know that God actually is the one that puts you through that. He ordained that from before the foundation of the world. For God called you to do good, even if it means suffering. Just as Christ suffered, and don't forget all the apostles were thrown in jail and killed, 
except potentially John, who might have just died in jail, not real sure. He is your example, and you must follow in his steps. He never sinned, nor ever deceived anyone. He did not retaliate <clears throat> when he was insulted, nor threaten revenge when he suffered. He left his cause in the hands of God, who always judges fairly. He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds, ye are healed. Once you were like sheep who wandered away, but now you have turned to your shepherd, the guardian of your souls. I like that. <laughs> that was really good. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls in the King James. All right, so let's move on to Daniel 2. I think we've got about 17 or so more verses of this chapter or more. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any of my earthly fleshly wisdom that I have more than any living, but for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation to the king and that thou mightest know the thoughts of my heart. Let's go ahead on and maybe read this in the New Living also. Sounds like it's getting a little tricky and there's, there's no need for, you know, King's English to confuse us. And it is not because I am wiser than anyone else that I know the secret of your dream, but because God wants you to understand what was in your heart, what was in your dream, what was in your vision. All right. Verse 31. In your vision, your majesty, you saw standing before you a huge shining statue of a man. It was a frightening sight. The head of the statue was made of fine gold. Its chest and arms were silver, its belly and thighs were bronze, its legs were iron, and its feet were a combination of iron and baked clay. As you watched, a rock was cut from a mountain, not by human hands. It struck the feet of the iron and clay, smashing them to bits. The whole statue was crushed into small pieces of iron, clay, bronze, silver, and gold. Then the wind blew them away without a trace, like chaff on the threshing floor. But the rock that knocked the statue down became a great mountain that covered the whole earth. That would be the thousand year millennial reign of uh, Christ with his sheep on the earth. And then there's judgment, and then there's eternal life in the new heaven, the new Jerusalem. Anyway, last two verses of today's study. That was the dream. Now we will tell the king what it means. Your majesty, you are the greatest of kings. The God of heaven has given you sovereignty, power, strength, and honor. And that's an earthly power, of course. Let's read it in the uh, King James. Thou, O king, sawest, and behold, a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee. And the form thereof was terrible. So the image that speaks from Revelation 13. Revelation 13, King James Version, Bible Gateway. see here and of course an image to the beast so there's that word image and we get to daniel and it talks about this great image a great image this great image This image's head. You with me? Go back to Revelation 13. That they should make an image to the beast. <coughs> That's this image to the beast. 
is nothing more than a culmination of the final image that was in Daniel's dream. The image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, and his feet part iron and part clay. That is machine or computer or technology. That's the iron. The clay is man. You want a reference for that? Talking about when Paul in Romans 9, 11 through 24 speaks of the fairness of God choosing his from before the foundation of the world, that, that sheep are born lost, but sheep are born sheep. They're just born lost. Then they get the call, which is your spiritual blood baptism of the fiery trials, baptism by trial, baptism by fire, fiery trials. As God pulls you out of the world. Shall we say to the thing, shall we say to the thing formed, humans, say to him that formed it, God, why hast thou made me thus? In other words, I'm a goat. Why'd you make me a goat? I have no ability with my own free will to turn from my damnable sins. What are damnable sins? You know, sins that God would have to call you out of. Now, the works of the flesh... Are manifest, which are these adultery. The Lord will pull you out of adultery. If you stay in adultery through the day you die, and then you go into these fake churches during your funeral, and your dead bodies lying there, and the preacher's getting out there going, Hey, love Jesus. He came to church every Sunday. We know where he is, we know he's with the Lord. Why? Because he paid you money sat in your church through gaining time or giving you his time and his money he purchased or you helped purchase mr preacher his salvation nah faith without works is dead james 2 26 Fornication, sex without marriage, uncleanliness, lavaciousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, reveling, like rioting and so forth. <coughs> it says right there, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So you're, get, you're literally given a list that you are not a sheep if you stay in those works of the flesh. Well, I'm not saved by my works, saved by grace. Are you truly saved by grace? Because faith without works is dead. Your works will follow you before you die. 
you will bear fruit of salvation. And you won't fight, argue, and bicker or have sexual sin. The Lord will call you out of it. He will deliver you out of it. Or you weren't his. So how many funerals have you attended where somebody loved the fake Jesus that loved the whole world all through their death? They never knew the real Jesus that only loves his. Doesn't love the whole world, loves his. Jesus said, I only came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Matthew 15, 24. I only came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Paraphrasing, but verbatimly paraphrasing. If that's an oxymoron, read Matthew 15, 24. Jesus said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel, if you want to go verbatim. <coughs> I am sent not but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You think I verbatim it? Hmm. He answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Paraphrasing. I'm on, I, I only came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's all he came for. He didn't come for the whole world. John 3.16 is falsely translated. By the Catholic Erasmus who penned Textus Receptus, the received text, which was used to write the King James, which was written by half Catholics and half Protestants. The Protestants understood man doesn't have any free will. The Catholics believed in it, which allowed the Bible to be extremely cryptically written. Perfect. It's exactly how God wanted it. His legs are of iron, his feet are part iron and part clay. Have the potter, God, not power, over the clay. Potter is God. Clay is man. Have not God power over the human flesh of the same lump to make one human unto a vessel of honor and another human unto a vessel of dishonor? That's what that's saying. Have not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and the other unto dishonor? Clay is humans. God's the potter. He molds the clay as he sees fit. He's the artist. His legs of iron machine technology and part of clay humans this is humans mixing with machinery or technology and it's through that that the demonic spirits will enter into humans using their human body as an avatar we will get into that in daniel 243 <laughs> i'd imagine that would be in tomorrow's study Thou sawest till that stone was cut out, cut without hands, which smote the image. This is when God comes and reclaims the earth and, of course, destroys the mystery Babylonian system. His feet that were of part iron and clay and break them into pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, the gold broken into pieces together and became like chaff on the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away and there was no place found in them. That's when God comes and reclaims the earth and destroys the mystery Babylonian system. And the stone that was smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. And that's when we will then have your thousand year millennial reign with Christ. This is the dream. 
and he will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Who is he? Daniel himself is speaking. This is the dream, and we will tell the, I'm sorry. This is the dream, and we, who is we? It's only Daniel speaking. He wasn't talking about himself in the third person, saying he. Daniel was saying we. Is there a mouse in your pocket, Daniel? I do this all the time. I refer to my YouTube channel as we. My Bible study channel as we. We covered that yesterday. We said that the other day. We put that. We teach that in this playlist. Who's we? Is there a mouse in my pocket? Was there a mouse in Daniel's pocket? No, it's him and God, the Holy Spirit, Daniel can't do it by himself. I can't do it by myself. We is in hope of it being us and the Holy Spirit, Daniel and the Holy Spirit, me and the Holy Spirit. You don't ever do anything that's good by yourself. You will do anything good in conjunction with the Holy Spirit, or it won't be good. It'll be empty calories at best. Let me give you some empty calories. I saw this uh, homeless wino on the streets and I just gave him a $20 bill. Or I, let's just say I gave this homeless man, homeless man on the streets a $20 bill. And I told him I'd give you this in the name of Jesus and walked away. Is that bearing good fruit or is that empty calories? That's empty calories. Was that guy a sheep that you gave it to? If he was a sheep, if he bared fruit, in other words, the homeless man you gave the money to, did he understand the truth? Did he tell you the truth? Did he look at you and say, God doesn't love everybody. He only loves the sheep. Did he say, Jesus only came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Hell is not eternal torment. I'm a little down on my luck. If you can spare some change, that would be bearing fruit, helping out a fellow sheep. If you just help out somebody of the world, it's empty calories. It, that's not bearing fruit. <clears throat> the world helps the world through Salvation Army or any other thing that they have. It's them helping them, and they do a pretty horrible job of it. Or there wouldn't be anybody homeless. There wouldn't be one person on the earth starving. Your food would be good everywhere. Everything would be organic. There would be nothing GMO'd, fluoridated, and it's not even real fluoride. It's a chemical a mile long. This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Daniel's the only one talking, y'all. Thou, O king, art a king of kings. For the God of heaven has given thee a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. Let's look at Daniel 2.36. See that picture of that guy right there? I'm going to go ahead on and make a prediction that he's a goat. You're like, well, that's a horrible thing to say. That's a pastor, and he's giving the word of God. He'll tell you he got free will. He puts a Christmas tree in his house. He'll tell you hell is eternal torment. He'll tell you that the baptism that's needed is with water. 
not the Holy Spirit. He'll lie to you. Just ask him. You get a hold of him and ask him. We will tell, H560. So that whole phrase, we will tell is all one word. So let's see what the definition is. To say, to speak, to command, to tell, to relate. I didn't understand where they got the we from. If it's just, if it just means to say, to speak, to command, to tell, why didn't he say I? First person singular, first person plural. Third person masculine singular. This is Daniel 236. I don't see it in there. Hmm. Where it says biblical Aramaic. Well, that's because it's not Aramaic. I don't know. I'm a little confused at this point, a little out of my element. Sorry. Let's get back in my lane. Love y'all very much. Ask questions anytime. That's what I'm here for.